which I think is kind of earned because they had way too much good going for them in the you know 2010s. Uh, yeah, reap what you sow. Oh, you. Hockey, 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 hockey. Yes, sir. Welcome back, everyone. This is episode 74 of Stick Talk Hockey. Man, I'm ready. Ready? I'm so ready. Ah, I've been waiting all summer. I mean, it, like it's it's so nice to have some time off. Of course, we did a lot of golfing, a whole bunch of stuff. But you know what? I've been I've been waiting for this day to get back in here. I'm excited about it. Absolutely. Yeah. How was your summer aside from, you know, uh, the obvious golf? Yeah, summer summer was great. Uh, it's been beautiful here. It hasn't been too hot, which I love. I mean, we've been I've been golfing quite a bit. Uh, I've been back on collecting records. Uh, got got a whole new setup going with the turntable and all that. So Carly and I have been doing some crate digging and buying some records, and that that was great. And then paddleboarding, living same old stuff. How about yourself? I love that. That sounds awesome. Uh, yeah, getting out in the sun when I can. You know, yeah. living, yeah. doing a lot of laser hair removal still, obviously. Yeah. So, you know, that's kind of tough right now because, you know, can't be out in the summer sun for two weeks before, two weeks after. So basically a month. Yeah. And then I get two weeks where I can and then another month where I can't. So sure. uh, that's been a little tough. But I mean, just like that's all right. Doing doing a lot of cleaning, yeah. a lot of like home reno stuff. Yeah. 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 You know, completely. Place looks great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I completely changed over the bedroom, you know. Like, I'm kind of in that place of transition where, like, I'm making what was an attempted man cave into a dollhouse. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. <laughs> you know? It, it, it was never even a full man cave because I was terrible at it. I was uh, It was a terrible <laughs> lie. I don't know how anyone <laughs> didn't call me on it sooner. But, yeah. Yeah, just, you know, lots of self-discovery and, yeah. you know, clothes shopping and yeah, the usual trans stuff. Yeah. And then, I mean, we had uh, some pretty cool news over the summer partnering partnering up with THPN. Oh, absolutely, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I know people, lots of people had seen it on social media, but we partnered up with the Hockey Podcast Network for this season. So uh, that's that's really exciting for us. We're going to be guesting on some other podcasts. We're going to be possibly having some guests on here where we are going to be running some advertising. Couple in the middle of each episode. Nothing too crazy. It's not going to be too intrusive, but should be good. Yeah, absolutely. It's go- it's going to open up some doors for us down the road. We, we appreciate everyone that's been tuning in, getting us this far. And if you haven't already, then make sure to uh, like and subscribe. And uh, if you can, leave us a rating. Uh, if you think we've earned it, you know, we'd greatly appreciate that. It will uh, further open up uh, more opportunities for more sponsorship deals, which will allow us to further improve the setup and bring you guys more uh, awesome coverage and more cool, neat ideas. Uh, so thank you for getting us this far. Thank you for THPN for having us. And uh, thank you f- to, uh, it's the Blue Seats, right? With Jimmy? Yeah. And yeah. thank you to uh, the, the Blue Seats. It's a Rangers podcast. It's hosted by Jimmy. And uh, he had us on recently. And uh, that was a, a really fun time. So if you have time after this episode, go and check that out. It, it's really fun. And uh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Hey, Jonesy. Let's pass Jay a mic here. Do you mind? Yeah. Jay, how was your summer? Uh, it was I. <laughs> was I? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, honestly, nothing crazy. Yeah. At all. I'm excited to be back. Sure. Maybe not like hype to talk about the Ducks right now, but Let's talk about the Ducks. Yeah. But but but, <laughs> but we back. But we back. Indeed, we are. Indeed, we are. It uh, is good to be back. Yeah, is it? And is is it ever? I mean, this this time of year just gets so exciting, right? We have uh, uh, hockey's about to get underway. It's about to start getting to that preseason area, training camp. I like watching all that stuff. And then uh, football's back this week. Uh, I'm amped for football this year. I'm very, very, very excited about it. Same. It's the first time in three years I've actually shown up for our draft. So that it's was true. dope. <laughs> it's, it's true first time still fumbled my first pick but that's okay that's okay we recovered <laughs> um yeah no I, i'm super yeah. pumped for this season actually i think it's yeah. going to be some some really really solid content and i love this time of year especially now that we have the deep uh, keepers fantasy league and yeah. fan tracks yeah 
because you just get to see all of those like prospects you have getting called up to the training camps and yep. it just it's it's nice yeah it is it is uh before we get into uh preseason stuff and some predictions uh we're, we're gonna skip on the the news from the off season, like uh off trades and off season stuff because obviously if you uh, pay attention in the hockey world uh everyone everyone saw that uh johnny Gaudreau and his brother matthew were struck by a drunk driver <laughs> Last week, and unfortunately, they both passed away, and so uh, that was a, a huge blow for the hockey community. And we just want to pay our respects here at Stick Talk. Yeah, absolutely. That it's just earth-shattering news. I don't really want to put too much more into it. I feel like there's enough think pieces on it out there already, but it's it's just a, an incredible loss for the hockey community as a whole. Um, just such a well liked well-rounded wholesome individual great father you know yeah. great great mentor uh just a, a a a pillar of hope for his community and uh undersized players all across the game and uh his his impact can't can't be uh stated enough yeah a hundred percent and yeah that, like like you said right i mean at this point, we we've all seen all all the st- stuff we need to see. I mean, the family's spoken about it. They held the candlelight vigil uh, out in Calgary there. Um, so yeah, we don't need to we don't need to talk too much about it. But yeah, we just wanted to pay our respects. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Just a fantastic person, and you know his his brother was much of the same. And yeah, it's yeah. just a tremendous loss. It is. So yeah. Thoughts and prayers go to the families. Of course. And, and you know, also, I'm, I'm appreciative of the Flames and the Jackets and how they've handled it with so much grace. And um, yeah. protected the family's privacy and given them space in this difficult time while also showing so much solidarity and um, love. Yeah, I, and I, I think that really just highlights how special hockey is, you know, because like I was really quite jaded at the end of last season. Yeah. And maybe rightfully so for quite a while. For sure. But it's in moments like this where you realize how little all of the other barriers and talking points matter. Because we're all still just one massive community, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. It's 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 very uh, very touching to see how, how everyone's responded, for uh, his family and the community. Rest in peace to Johnny and Matthew. And. Uh, I mean, do we just? How do we segue out of that fucking hell? I I know, right? Yeah, so I guess we should just go through how these uh, these episodes are going to run prior to the season here. we got a few before the season actually starts. So we're going to do division breakdowns and predictions and record predictions and standings predictions on every division. That's how we're going to spend these first few episodes, getting back into the swing of things here. We're going to start off with the Pacific today. We've all got our takes in, the three of us, and uh, we're ready to start talking about some hockey. Hell yeah, let's get into it. Yeah, we'll go alphabetical. Um which puts us at the Anaheim Ducks up first. Oh, boy. So, yeah, Ducks, I mean, it wasn't a big offseason for them, right? They had Brian Dublin, they had Robbie Fabry. Okay, that's not, like, groundbreaking stuff anywhere. I think if you're, if you're looking for a, a best-case scenario for the Ducks, you're really just looking at internal development. Uh, Yeah. Yeah, I'd I'd say a large part of the Ducks right now is just hoping that a couple of their rookies can make the bigger step. Yeah. I I really think that it will be super, super essential for at least two of their players to step forward, whether that's Leo Carlson or or Tristan Leneau or Mason McTavish or Trevor Zegras. I know people might say, oh, Trevor Zegras has taken the step. He hasn't. He looked like trash. Let's be real. Uh, Well, and and he was hurt, right? Like, they need him to be healthy. Yeah, and, and... you know, he's had so many roadblocks in the way of him taking the next step anyways that, like, you know, I'd, I'd like to see him take a full step. 
for yeah. a change instead of half steps. Yep, I agree. Um, it's a group that I like them to add some wins on last year. I like them to be a little bit better than last year. Um, simply because of that internal development thing, you're gonna see some guys here that like Leo Carlson as well is a guy that it's his sophomore season and he was hurt a lot last year. Yep. Uh, Trevor Zegras obviously has had some injury issues. Mason McTavish, you're hoping can take a step. Cutter Goche, he's gonna get his shot into the lineup this year. I mean, I have a hard time seeing them being worse than their what do they have 23 wins last year or something ridiculous really curious to see where the zegris mctavish like priority shakes out yeah and i like robbie fabry i wish they wasn't hurt so much because i really do like like him as a player yeah yeah that's fair ryan strom as well I, it's hard to imagine this team just is as bad i, I agree I, I think i look at this team and because also like they, they have some guys on the back end that could uh, have some growth as well, right? Like Mintikov and Zellweger. Um, and I, I think that they really do need those guys to show some growth because sure. I honestly see them losing Cam Fowler this year. Probably around deadline. Yeah. He's got two years left. Uh, it's very clear that he's not going to be sniffing a cup or winning yeah. with this team at all. Yeah, yeah. He's getting old. It's kind of one of those things where the team can get value for him. He's a he's a defenseman that fetches a lot of value, especially yeah. coming close to playoffs. Yeah. And there's not much here for him anymore, right? Like No. Gudis, he's probably going to get the captaincy and then he's going to ride into the sunset as like a, a leader that we never saw, like which is wild. Yeah. If, you, if you told me Radko Gudis was going to be captain of the Ducks. Is he the captain? Yeah. Well, he, they're the rumor the is wow. the rumor is they're gonna give him the C. Intriguing, and I mean he's the enforcer. He's there to protect all the kids, so it, it, it makes sense. But if you told me ten guys years love ago, him, I, I hear that the guys love him. And I mean, like if you know, why not? Uh huh. Truba's got the C. Uh, well, <laughs> they'll they'll never win with it on him, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah Jam- but yes, but Jamie yeah. Ben's got the C. Trum like. I'm just going to be honest. If you are ever using Jamie Benn and Jacob Truba as captaincy examples, we're talking about bad captains. That's all. That's the only thing we could be talking about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I never said Gudis would be a good captain. I just said he's going to be a captain. He's going to be the captain. Okay, fair enough. I could see it. I could see it with Radko. All right. <laughs> and, but but that being said, that being I, said. I, I, I would expect them to lose Cam Fowler. Gudis will probably stay the course and retire there, but uh, I, I could hi- I could very much see Fowler moving to a contending team. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. I think if, if I I don't have like the craziest amount to actually give more than that on this team, but I will say I think they're gonna add a couple wins just off internal development, and I think they're gonna add a couple wins just off that jersey. Those jerseys are so sick, aren't they? I don't they? know what it is, but it's way fresher that they're going to win a couple games just because of that. It's the orange. They changed the orange. Yeah. It's it's not as, like, cringy 2000s neon era, you know? Yeah, for Like, sure. that was terrible when Under Armour first came out and was, like, the trendiest thing with their neons. Oh, God, I hated that. Awful. This Awful, is a, a, a really nice orange. The mask is just so crisp. Yeah, logo's just so much better. That's, uh, absolutely. That, that's their the goaded logo. Yeah, you you got to go with what works. Yeah, you know, like um, the the have the Habs changed their logo. No, have have the Bruins changed their logo? No, they tried the bear thing, and it was a terrible idea. It was a terrible idea, and now it's just an alternate, which I do like. Yeah, I do like the alternate. I do too. Anyways, all right. So what do we got for for uh, projections on that? Can you? So yeah, I got them adding. They had twenty seven wins last year. I have them adding five wins onto that 32 win team skip for 73 points and sixth in the pacific i actually have them doing worse i guess <laughs> I, I, I guess 
I, I got them with uh, 25 wins, 37 losses, 20 overtime losses. 20 OTLs is crazy. I, I just, like, I look at this team, and I think that they're, like, going to make a game out of a lot of it, or teams are yeah. going to sleep on them. But right. then they're inevitably going to get squished out by the end of it. Like, I, I foresee this, like, being a team where, like, they'll go up 2-1, 3-1, and then just fold on themselves and be like, yeah, oh, the extra point's fine. Like, when's the last time a team had 20 OTLs? It's a good question. I feel like I've, I've never seen that before. But if any team's going to do it, it's your Ducks this year. Yeah, I, well, I, I mean, I couldn't see them getting more than 25 when I was doing it. Like, maybe, okay, maybe 33. If you move six over from the OTLs and, you know, yeah, you squeak go. a couple wins there, then, yeah, okay, like, you know, give them 14 OTLs and 33 wins, but still. Yeah, yeah, I like it. Uh, Jay? I, I'm honestly kind of high on the Ducks. Kind of high on the Ducks? I am. I like Lucas Dostal a lot. Yeah. And I'm going to maybe regret it, but maybe bank on some John Gibson positive regression. That's fair. So, like, I really don't hate their goalie tandem. And <laughs> yeah, I can see I can see some improvement in Anaheim, though, for sure. I like it. So, you got him at, what, 35 wins, sixth place as well? Yeah. I like that. I mean, it's pretty close to, to where I had him, so. Okay, so we're all in agreement this is not a playoff team. Yes. Um, but if you're a Ducks fan, assuming that it, you're not just, like, plagued with injuries again, it should be a pretty fun year. Honestly, yeah. No. There's a lot of explosive players, a lot of really, really impressive rookies to yeah. look out for. I, I think that it's just going to be thrilling. Like, I remember when the Devils were in this stage, mm -hmm. and it was – you know, you, you knew you were going to lose, but that kind of made it more fun. Yep, 100%. It's like, yeah, do something cool. That's how, like, I mean, uh, in the Ducks case, you're kind of hoping it's going to start getting better now. But, like, for me, we'll get to them, obviously. But my ultimate team for that this year is San Jose. It's going to be so much fun to be a San Jose fan this year. Just watching Macklin, watching Will Smith, watching Eklund, like all these guys that you just, like, you know the team's going to be absolute doo-doo. But it's going to be a lot of fun. San Jose's done a really good job of picking up like scraps and prospects that teams just weren't big on yeah. or didn't have space for either. Yeah. Like there's two or three players on that team now that were Devils prospects that were traded for not that much value. Mm -hmm. And they look good now. It's uh Mukamadulin, yeah. Zetterland, yeah. and there's a third in there, but I can't remember. Yeah. All right, let's go. Let's go down the list here. Let's stick one, stick, stay on it, and we'll go to Calgary next. So, the Flames. I mean, this is a a, a tough team, right? Calgary's in in a in a bad way. Like it's it's full on rebuild time out there. Obviously, Jacob Markstrom gets traded to the Devils. That's gonna give Dustin Wolf the full time starter job. We'll see how that goes. But I mean, you lose all those guys that I mean you had lost at the deadline last year. Lindholm, Tanev. Hannafin, I, I like it's it. it things are, are 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 not good there. You you add Mantha on the one year. Hopefully you can flip him at a deadline. Five year extension for Sharon Govich. I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, it's it's to be expected though. This is what happens when you sell everything at the deadline. Is of course, you have nothing yeah. when you come back the next year. Naturally, you know. So, granted, they did lose a lot, but. They also gained a lot of flexibility in cap later on. So it's not necessarily the worst thing for them. No, they, they, they needed it, right? Like, I mean, the truth is the, the rebuild was going – was inevitable when they lost that two weeks of Goudreau and Kachuk, right? When Goudreau walked and they – again, hindsight's twenty twenty. I don't think it was a bad trade, but like Huberto Uyghur has not paid off. No, not at all. Not, not as soon as all. that happened, it was inevitable. Yeah. You know, you just you, you just can't replace those guys. I mean, you're gonna have Michael Backlund probably first line center. <laughs> yeah. Blake Coleman, first line winger, yeah. 
I mean, th- th- this. Uh, hey, don't get me don't get me wrong. I love Blake Coleman. Of course, absolutely. I don't love Blake Coleman on the first line though. No, absolutely not. But I mean, if you're paying him that much, you may as well, because like. Pfft. I think that this is a team that has a lot of players that have a chance to grow. I think Mantha's had some really off-putting years, but I think if you put him with the speed of Sharon Govich and Zari, who are, you would hope, taking the next step, then I think you have kind of a gateway to a future. It's not certain, but it's like you're you're taking the right steps, you know? Yeah, I... I don't disagree with that, and I think Calgary is, has shown through the past like twenty years that they're a pretty well-run organization. They've always been like decent, at least, and so I think that they're they're kind of on the right path. And I think they were smart to actually go all in and trade away the pieces that were worth anything. But yeah, I, I there's think not a, there's not a, there's not a lot of reason to watch them this year. That's for sure. No, absolutely. Unless you're like on rookie watch or you know fantasy watch for some of these you know more depth players like i i traded for anderson yeah you know so i'll probably watch a few flames games for that reason alone sure kevin ball x devil might watch some of that see how he fits in that's my boy yeah you know but like yeah this team is going to be pretty boring they're going to be pretty one-dimensional you might see some really interesting speed in the middle of the lineup but you know ho-hum Oh, hum. Yeah, it's it's a rebuild team. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's and, that's what it is. And like Flames fans, like don't hold your breath for things to get better. It's gonna get worse. Okay. Um, projections for Calgary here. What do you got? Uh, I got them going thirty, thirty six, and sixteen again. Like just a team that's gonna be very good at getting almost there, but not have enough sauce to get over the line. Uh, I got him at sixth place finish, you know, 76 points, nothing special. Yeah. A, a whole hum mid rebuild type thing. Yeah. I have them. I have them even worse than that. I don't have them cracking 30 wins, 27, 39 and 16. My, my biggest OTL merchants in this list. And yeah, I, I, I agree with you. Like, I think that, you know, having Anderson and Weaker back there and then uh, I like Dustin Wolf as well. I think that they will be, pretty steady defensively so i think they'll get to ot regularly but they just have no horses to to win in three on three um besides maybe andre kuzmanko (laughs) so there's not a there's not a lot i like about the calgary flames this year i have them finish it with 70 points and that's good for second last in the pacific ouch yeah jonesy how you feeling i'm uh, i'm not feeling great about calgary no. I'm I mean in the middle. I got seventy two points. Nice. Honestly, nothing that I can say that y'all haven't already. Yeah. It's yeah. just it's nothing too crazy here. No, there's not there's not like just too much to say about the flames in all seriousness. Like they're kind yeah. of just in a spot we all know, we all understand and it's not a not a fun place to be. But it's all like like if you're a Calgary fan though, you understand it, right? Like you know what you know where the team's at. Yeah. Also uh, for the record, to our, our our YouTube viewers out there, this is the last week Jonesy will be without his own microphone. As of next week, Jay will have his own mic. We won't have to pass the mic back and forth to him. That's how it's going to be. Let's move to our next team here. We have the Stanmans and Oilers. Um, fresh off a new GM, Ken Holland, Bob Bai. We talked about this pretty extensively in our free agency re- uh, recap here, but... Uh, they bring in uh, Stan Bowman. So, anyways, we'll we'll get to the Oilers here. They do a lot of things this off season. They lose Broberg and Holloway to the St. Louis Blues through an offer sheet that was very smart by St. Louis. It worked out perfectly. They end up getting both of those players. I I loved the answer that uh. Oh, who who's their GM? Just like coming out and being like, I, I don't I don't believe that there's a rule against offer sheeting. If there's a code, yeah. then no one told me about it. I I don't understand. Like the people always talk about how, like hockey's like this like cutthroat sport and all that. But the moment anyone brings up like offer sheeting players, teams get so butthurt about it. Yeah, like Edmonton was like upset about it, and it's like, well, like you had trade offers on the table for those players, and you said no. 
Yeah, and you knew St. Louis wanted those players, right? Like St. Louis themselves. They they were asking about those players earlier this year. I I just don't get it. And it's similar to like uh, the Canadians and the Canes and the Kokaniemi situation. That was a bit of a mess. And like, yeah, it's a, it's a part of the game for a reason. It's a part of the league for a reason. Don't sign the players. They can get offer sheeted. Sorry. Yeah, I don't know what to tell you. Like, the, and you got picks out of it. Like, it's not like you got robbed. No, you get value out of it. It's just like you snooze, you lose. Yeah, manage your cap better. I don't know. So they lose them. They also cap dump Cody CC. That was smart. They needed to do that. Absolutely, no big deal there. Um, they bring in Jeff Skinner. They bring in Victor Robertson. Uh, Vasily Pod Colson. They bring in as well. Uh, for pretty much nothing, and. Big boy dry saddle gets the big boy contract. Uh, he's going to become the highest paid player in the league next year. Woof. Woo. Yeah. 14 mil. Yeah. Hello. Won't be for long. McDavid's up pretty soon. Uh, yeah. That, that'll but, cost you. But uh, yeah, it's it's nice. I mean, uh, there was a lot of like kind of noise around it, right? Around what's going to happen with him, blah, blah, blah. And coming off of game seven of the Stanley Cup finals, it's nice to just not have that noise and be able to be locking in for another hopefully deep run yeah absolutely and i love the addition of jeff skinner like this is a guy who i feel would just be a fantastic play merchant like he's he's not a play driver he never has been but he's a very good player he's underrated as hell yeah and he's just always been in bad situations and been told to just you know suffer through it essentially it'll get better it'll get better and it just doesn't. Yeah. Right? So I, I really think the change of scenery will be good for him. I think it'll be a rejuvenation of sorts. I, I wouldn't be shocked to see him scoring 35 or more. I, I think he's Jeff gonna, Skinner scoring 35 goals is pretty rich for me. I, I think he could do it. I think that like with the type of lineup Edmonton has, with with the type of players he's going to be playing with, and in the type of situations that he's going to be playing on, I just feel like he's going to be seeing a lot more open ice and a lot more uh, touches in the places where he's comfortable and has that good shot from. Yeah. Uh, I, I just think he's going to fare really well here. Victor Arvidsson, I'm a little bit more cautious on. I think that that's a guy who thrived a lot off of his speed and snap. And uh, the speed's sort of lingering he's coming off an injury which you know makes me con more concerned about its lingering uh potential yeah the shot never really goes anywhere but you know he's he's walking a very thin line between becoming just a a power forward that grinds the third line yeah i, I agree with that uh, I, don't, I, I don't know. I mean, I look at the lineup itself, and when it comes uh, – part of me wants to say, like, okay, well, this team, looking at how they performed last year and with the massive uh, slump at the beginning of the season, you got to assume that's not going to happen again. But I, I – I, can't say I really love this forward group either. You know what I mean? Like, I do like the Jeff Skinner ad, and I don't mind the Arvidsson ad. I think if you want both of them in your top six, you're asking for a lot. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and, I mean, even penciling Pod Colson into this lineup is a, a long shot for me. I, I, I mean, I, I'm very familiar with Vasily Pod Colson's game, and that dude has shown essentially nothing for two straight seasons now. Yeah, he has not taken the step, but, but I mean, he's still a very serviceable body. And if I don't even know, I don't even know that he's that. They needed those in Vancouver last year. When injuries started piling up, like they they needed just literally serviceable fourth line bodies, and every time they brought him up, he'd get one game and back down he goes. Yeah, I mean, certain teams just like don't have a taste for certain players, you know. Like look at uh, Andrew Peak in 
Uh, Columbus. The guy, the guy can't even scratch a point per game in the AHL. At 24 years old, those players aren't career NHLers. Yeah, I mean, I don't think he'll be around forever. I think he'll probably have another five-ish years and then probably end up in the SHL or the KHL or, you know, whoever will pay him the most. I'm, but, I, yeah, I, I think he could be there next year, honestly. Yeah. Uh, I I'm, like, I'm, I'm being so for real right now. I know he was a top 10 pick, but... I don't, I don't buy it. I just don't think the fall off is going to be that quick. And I think if he's what, playing, what, what is there to fall off? The guy's been an AHL player for two years. Yeah, I don't know. I, th- I think that if he's playing with Ryan and Perry and like he's just being a disruptor and potting ten to fifteen a season, like that's all you need out of your fourth line, especially in yeah. Edmonton's situation. Like Absolutely. all they need him to do is score ten to fifteen. And that's not a big ask when you have like half of the team just focused on Corey Perry because he's such a Jay. Can you pull up his stat line? Insert insert name here. Like, and I was I was a big Vasily Puck Holes and believer. Like he's he's a big body. I quite like the guy. The guy had twenty eight points in forty four games in the AHL last year. Yeah. Two points in twenty NHL games. Yeah, that's tough. His NHL totals look tough too. I mean. Yeah, I, I would love to see it work out there, but I I think it's it's a long shot. You know, and I I, I want to like make a point out of this because I feel like I didn't get it across when we were going over the draft stuff. Sure. This is why I'm so weary of Russian players, because I just don't believe in the development pipeline in the same way as I do the North American development pipeline. Mm. Yeah, because you have a lot of these guys. They perform well in the Russia juniors, and then they immediately just play underage in the K. Yeah, and it's like, sure, they're learning how to play against like full-grown men. Men, yeah, but they're not learning how to play top-level hockey. Then they're just learning no. how to play subpar men's hockey. You know, so, and yeah. it, it just makes it that much harder to take a meaningful step developmentally. Like, yeah, look at this. He's got like. Russia Juniors, KHL, Russia Juniors, KHL, Russia Juniors, KHL, KHL, NHL, AHL, NHL, HL. And he just never actually finds a step. Yeah, like I don't I don't hate the move for them, right? Like they give up a fourth on that lottery ticket, and that's a fine gamble, I think. Um Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, it's fine, but I'm just I'm not I'm not sold. I'm really not and Corey Perry didn't do a lot for me last year. Um I have a feeling he's not going to again this year. This D group, I don't think is very good. That's just the truth of it. The top line's great. I I think this D group sucks. <laughs> yeah, right? I, I I never like talking bad about players, but I mean we're podcasters, so we have to have opinions. We're we're not friendly. I'm just not a fan of it. I don't think it's gonna hold up against a a lot of high caliber offenses this year. I, I mean, look, Stetcher's your boy. I love Troy Stetcher. He's, 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 he's a seventh. He's a seventh D at best. That's my boy. That's yeah. saying right he is. That's press box material. Absolutely. I I don't want to see him in the A. I just want to see him cozy in a suit, eating some chicken tendies and watching the game. Yes. Yeah. You know, that's the type of player he is for sure. <laughs> that's so fucking mean. Yeah, so that's Jesus. horrifically mean. But <laughs> shout out to Troy Stetcher. I love Troy Stetcher. I and really I feel, do. I I feel like Brett Kulak should be in the A. But I'll just be point blank with that one. Uh, Ty Emerson uh, is not a second line player. Darnell Nurse is paid five million more than he should. Yeah. The o- the only good thing I like about this is Bouchard. Yeah, I like the Bouchard Ekholm pairing. I really do. And I loved Ekholm for a long time, but I just like I'm starting to get to that point where it's like, yeah, their I don't back. Know. I don't know. Their back end is just like it's the same thing. It's the same problem they had for so many years as their top end, as their forward group, which is. Well, you have two players that are good, and they can't carry an entire team. Right? That's the, that's the problem with their D group now. It used to be their problem with the forward group. Now it's the problem with their D group. Yeah, and I think it's really just the inability to self-diagnose at the end of the day. When you go out and get big names like Arvidsson and Skinner, Yeah, it's like, yeah, that's freaking awesome, and it's really sure. exciting. But you didn't lose because you weren't scoring, right? You you right. lost because you let in so many goals and bad ones. Yeah. Like, you know, season-killing, momentum-eating goals. Yep. 
You you yeah. need to have a defense that's able to get you a quick out, a quick turnover, and keep the momentum going in Game 7, not yeah. get swallowed up and get turned into a blender for five minutes. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I, I think when I look at Edmonton, I I couldn't, even, even accounting for the fact that there's not going to be a massive bottom of the lineup slump at the beginning of the year, I couldn't give them much more points than I did last year. Yeah, I mean, I have them finishing with more points than last year. I think they're 103 last year. I have them at 106, 50-win team. Um, one of the best teams in the division, no doubt. However, I do have them second in the Pacific this year. Uh, 50 wins, 26 losses, 6 OTLs. That's what I have them at. I don't think they're going to lose a whole lot in overtime because uh, they got that boy, Connor. Yeah. No, that's very fair. Uh, I got him at uh, 113 points, first in the division, 52 wins, 21 losses, nine overtime losses. Uh, you can't have McDavid out there all the time, but, you know, is what it is. Yep. And I, I just think that, like, this is really a testament to how I feel about this team. I think they are, on paper, one of the best teams in the league in forward group. And I think that they're going to absolutely outscore their way to the playoffs and to a first in the division. But you don't win. You don't win the chip with scoring. Yeah, it's well, and you don't you don't get anything. You don't get a trophy for beating everyone in the Pacific, right? Exactly. Yeah. And like it's yeah, well, it's like how uh, we talked about the Rangers on that Rangers podcast with Jimmy. It's like this is a very good regular season team, but that doesn't matter if your game plan isn't conducive to holding up in the postseason, And it's not. That's, that's exactly how I feel. I like, I feel like I was kind of just dumping on Edmonton for a while there. And yeah, I should be very clear. This is a, a, one of the best teams in the West, a, a 100 point team for sure. But really are they, uh, the bar is now higher, right? The bar is no longer, can they make the playoffs? Can they, whatever it's, can they win the Stanley Cup after you went to Game 7 in the Stanley Cup Final last year? And that's where I have a lot of question marks about this team. But for for the regular season, they're going to walk through a lot of games, for sure. Yeah, 100%. Especially when you look at how weak, how pathetic some of the teams just in their own division are, never mind the short trip over to the uh, the Central. Yeah. Like, it, they're going to have a very easy and nonchalant time racking up points in the West. Yeah. It's not going to be an issue. Jonesy, how do you feel about the Edmonton Oilers? I'm in a very similar boat to you, Reese. I got them at 105 points, one less than you. Yep. I um, I worry about the decor, but I'm sure they're going to make some additions, whether that's at the deadline or earlier in the year. Like that top six and that top parent can probably just carry them to Yeah. A lot of wins. Uh, yeah. I don't I don't love Stuart Skinner. No. I don't think anyone does. Yeah. But I think he can play like average Yeah. Yeah. I think you can get average goal tending over Stuart Skinner. Yeah. For sure. I'll tell you, though, my, my worry about... So, like, that's the thing, right? I feel like we might be in a bit of a new era of, like, mid-season additions rather than just deadline and free agency additions. You know, I, I look around at, like, kind of the Vegas formula and how they've, you know, Jack Eichel mid-season, you know. Uh, uh, I mean, Thomas Hurdle, as much as that was at the deadline, it wasn't like a rental contract, right? The guy has a ton of years left on that deal. Well, and uh, yeah. Sorry, you, you finish. Um, and I just think these teams aren't done. I think that there's a lot of room for teams to add more mid season rather than just at the deadline, looking for rentals teams that are looking to just bolster up these groups and Edmonton's one of them. My question mark around Edmonton in that regard is do y'all trust Stan Bowman to be that dude to get you the pieces you need? Because, I look, regardless of Stan Bowman, the human being, I, it's been a long time since I've watched Stan Bowman make good moves. 
Yeah, that's a great point. That that, that is a really great point. I don't know. And I think it depends on maybe the team around him and how much like say they have in the process. Because I don't have like an overwhelming amount of faith in Stan Bowman as a decision maker. No. Uh, at, or as a human being. But, you know, I, yeah. I'm not going to go there. If you want, you can just go to our last episode. Yeah. It's there. I don't apologize and I don't take any of it back. No. Um, yeah, my, my biggest thing, like, I, I think that you're so on the mark with the midseason edition. And I think if there's anything that the numbers have suggested, like we're, we're both big stats people here. It's that the deadline doesn't work. The deadline edition is just too close to the playoffs for players to get acclimated. Most of these guys need 30 to 40 games to really find their stride with the organization and with the the change of the game plan. And the thing is, is that, you know, there's some unresolved uh, situations still brewing in the NHL, right? I mean, uh, these are more forwards than defensemen, but going into this year, like we have, and if there's teams looking to add, we have some, some just kind of, yeah, situations that are brewing. Like I, I look at like uh Zegris. We still don't really have a resolution to that, even though now he's kind of staying, but who knows? Like if, if the season goes downhill quickly for Anaheim, who knows? Maybe they are looking to move him. What is going on with Mitch Marner? Yep. Right. Like that's something that was suddenly like, like the 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 analysts who know what's going on in Toronto were like, there's a five percent chance Mitch Marner's here next season, and it's like, and then it just went completely dead, and it's like, okay, so what's going on there? We we, it's it's a lot of things that like if they decide to move those guys, in retrospect, it's going to be like, oh, obviously, yeah, but we just don't know if they're going to happen right now. I, exactly, and I mean like, yeah, of course, everyone at the off season's like they're gonna move. No, they're not. Calm down. Um, yeah, I, I I would be shocked if Edmonton didn't make moves, though. Um, yep. They, yeah, they're going to have to for sure. I think they have their first round pick this year. So what are you doing if you're trying to win a cup? Selling. Yeah. This episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. What's something that you'd love to learn? As an adult, are you still making time to learn new things or did you give that up as a child? As a kid, we're full of all this this curiosity and desire to lo- learn new things. And uh, as we get older, sometimes it's easy to put things into a box. It's easy to just stick to what we know and what we're good at. But it's really important to keep learning new things and growing yourself as a human. Therapy can help you reconnect with that sense of wonder in your life, that, that childhood dreaming of learning new things. I can tell you personally that I know loads of people that have tried therapy and had it do wonders for them in their personal lives. Whether it's just things you want to talk about with someone else, whether it's things you want to unravel, whether it's relationships with other people, therapy can be for anyone. That's where BetterHelp comes in. It's entirely online. It's easy to use. It's easy to get matched up with a licensed therapist. It's easy to switch your therapist at any time if you don't like the one that you're giving off rip. So if you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. Rediscover your curiosity with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash THPN today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash THPN. Hey guys, NFL Week 1 is here. And a new season means new ways to get in on the action at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Ready to place your first bet? Try betting on something simple like picking a player to score a touchdown. We got lots of lines coming up for the upcoming Thursday night game here. You got same game parlays. That's 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 my whole thing here. Lots of player props available. As of right now, as I'm recording, the Buffalo Bills are plus 114 on the money line. Miami Dolphins are dash 135 on the money line. There's some action in there. So ready to do a touchdown dance of your own? Score big with DraftKings Sportsbook, the best place to bet touchdowns. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use code THPN. That's code THPN for new customers and get $250 in bonus bets when you bet just 5 bucks and get one month of NFL Plus Premium on us. Only on DraftKings. The crown is yours. Yeah, let's get to LA here. Uh, Pierre-Luc Dubois, gone. Adios, amigo. Uh, That was a pretty failed experiment really quickly. They move on to him, move on from him and bring in Darcy Kemper. Uh, needs to rebound a little bit, had some injury issues, but this is a guy who won a Stanley Cup. I think was a very underrated goalie in Colorado's Cup win. Um, people kind of just were like, whoa, look at how good that team is, of course. So he kind of got the Corey Crawford tre- treatment, I feel like. 
Yeah. Um, but he was fantastic there. He was fantastic in Arizona. And nobody cared because it was Arizona. Not his fault. So hopefully he does bounce back. Matt Waugh is out. Joel Edmondson, Tanner Janot, Warren Fogle, all in for LA. Uh, their goal scoring really failed them in the back half of last year. I'm not sure that these additions help that. It doesn't. And I, I think that it's just going to lead to more frustration in their group. I yeah. think a lot of the players have indicated they want to get away from the trap system. It's boring. The fans hate it. It doesn't work anymore. Yeah. What are we doing? And uh, instead of going to get fast players that can make meaningful change towards a system and structure, they got more of the same players that they have for that structure. Yeah. I mean, Tanner Janot is, he could have been a great power forward scorer until he got, you know, shoehorned into a grinder role. Uh, Warren Fogle is very capable of scoring, but uh, whatever, you know, not like a needle mover by any means. And he's, again, very much just a big body shut down system player. Yeah. Uh, Edmondson, you know. Uh, Fine. Uh, yeah. I, I, I don't mind Edmondson. I don't. I don't. I don't mind him, but I don't have anything fantastic to say about him either. He's no. just there and he does his job. And it's like, sure, that's great, but that's not gonna help with your issue at all. Uh, I'm I'm gonna be real with LA. I actually think that they add wins this year, um, and I, it really just comes to down to having a goalie that can win you some games that you didn't get last year. But I actually think that they're like farther away from contending, even if they're going to win more regular season games this year. Yeah. And I mean, like to be clear about LA's situation, LA is a team that like had some really promising picks. Yeah. That did not pan out. Well, Quinton seems to be finally hitting. Yeah, he does. But I mean, like Anderson Dolan, he's gone. Yeah. And that was supposed to be like a big needle mover for them. Yeah. That was like going to be their touted second or third C. Sure. He's not even cracking an NHL roster right now. I think he yeah. got like a, a two way 750 somewhere else, like bare minimum. Like, you know, th this is a team that's really struggling to have good things happen for them right now. Yeah. Which I think is kind of earned because they had way too much good going for them in the you know 2010s yeah, yeah. reap what you sow bow you <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's very like like dallasy right trying to get that dallas rebuild off except they didn't have a draft where they hit on robertson ottinger and heiskin and all in a row exactly and yeah. i mean like that you can't script that it just happens or it doesn't and yeah, yeah. they've they've just had a couple players that were supposed to be really good that haven't been really good yeah 100 percent and when you aren't bringing things in because you think these guys are going to be really good eventually and then you don't and you run out of assets, then you're just like you're 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 hogtied. Yeah. Yeah. So I think they add a couple wins. Um, I got them at 45 wins this year. 30 losses, seven OTLs. It's good for 97 points. And it's going to be like one of those. Really? 97 points teams, you know, um, I think they're going to be third. In the Pacific, which means I have them facing the Oilers again in the first round and getting walked by the Oilers again in the first round. Um, yeah, that's what I got. I like it. I, I, I get it, but this is probably one of the only ones we're going to be way off on. I have them going 37, 30, and 15. That's good for 89 points and fourth in the Pacific. It's also good enough for wild card two in my uh, grand scheme of things, but we'll get to that in the next episode. But it's worth noting. I just think that this is a team that's going to be good enough to get there because they haven't quite hit the cliff where they have to admit it's rebuild time. But they just don't have enough. They're they're gonna, you know, pound out the wins. They're gonna struggle to get to the playoffs. They're gonna grind their way there, and then they're gonna fall off a cliff. And like you said, get absolutely dog walked again yeah uh jay my man jay i i got them at 97 points and we're, I, we're I, identical I, I agree with what you said reese in like the terms of like really that's a playoff team yeah but when you do look at the roster it's very much the same as last year yeah the pacific is very mid so 
Yeah. I think they kind of they sneak in there. Uh, uh yeah, I agree. This, the, the, that's the thing about this division too, right? As we're kind of getting getting through it here, is like there's there's some other divisions that are going to be a lot tougher. Yeah. Namely, all the other ones. I've, <laughs> That's what I discovered doing all of my notes, too. I was like, wow. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's move on here. And we're going to go down, out to uh, San Jose, I believe, right? Oh, yeah. Let's, yeah. Let's hit this one real quick. There ain't much here. Yeah, there ain't much, right? Like we said earlier, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun if you're a San Jose fan. You're going to get to watch Will Smith, Macklin Celebrini. They should be in the lineup on day one. Logan Couture, hopefully happy and healthy and back. Um you lose Thomas Hurdle, obviously. They also add Barkley Goudreau. They add Tyler Foley. They add Alex Wenberg. I mean, uh, uh, Jake Wallman on the back end. They they won't be good, but they've certainly raised their floor from last year. They, yeah, <laughs> Mackenzie Blackwood and Net, but they also bring in uh, uh, Askarov <laughs> after saying Blackwood's going to be their guy. <laughs> Incredible, I, but you had to, right? As soon as Askarov became available, you you got to go for it. I I just There's, yeah, I just like I don't understand why the why Greer had to go out of his way to like make these wild bold claims about Blackwood. Yeah, if in the back of his head he knew that he was like lying, because like no one asked anyways. It's like one of those things where it's like it's like when LeBron lies, and it's like, but why? You but didn't I, have to lie. You didn't have <laughs> to do that. You could have just not said anything. And said something else about something else. I do think they they had faith that Blackwood was going to be their guy, though. I I could believe it. And I, then, I, but then when a guy like Askarov becomes available, you have to, right? There's you have to. That yeah, it's I mean it's destination changing material right yeah. there. That's that's your perennial goalie for like a franchise. Hopefully, yeah. Uh, you know, it's hard to tell, but it could be, and you don't pass up that opportunity. Um, yeah. I I also just want to highlight like how smart they've been with acquiring players uh, off of waivers. Uh, yeah. You know the Goudreau snag was really really smart. Yeah, it was. That was sick. You know, like, yeah. I, and I've heard Kutcher is going to be on pace to make a start as soon as the season is underway. So yeah, that's what that's what it seems like. Yeah, I mean, oh, they're gonna be slightly better but they're still gonna be terrible but it's exciting it's it's a, yeah. it, it, enjoy it sharks fans like as a as a uh celebrini fantasy holder in fan tracks i'll definitely be catching some of these games and uh hopefully it won't be awful like watching san jose do anything last year was like it was it was truly like disrespectful that that was an nhl team last year <laughs> oh for sure yeah. I, I mean like they redefined tank yeah. as a whole but w w with that said, you know, they've also bounced back and added a bunch of things. They made real hockey yeah. moves. Like, well, and I mean, it got the Macklin Celebrine. Yeah. And now they have a legitimate franchise center and they have yeah. like they're basically on the Pittsburgh Penguins path now. You know, they got the goalie. Yeah, they got a hope. They got the center. Yeah. They got the second C. Yeah. I don't know, it looks pretty good from like an Eagles eagle eye perspective at this point hopefully they're bad enough this year to get a someone really good next year and they're well on their way oh oh for sure and uh, hey you know what san jose fans like just be patient if these guys make mistakes it's not the end of the world don't hate tweet them don't tear them down just cheer really loud for the good stuff they do because you're gonna have a lot of it coming in the future yeah so just enjoy the moment it's it's literally like guilt-free pleasure watching yeah if if it goes bad it's supposed to go bad whatever we expected to lose but if yeah. it goes well then hell yeah party like you know these are some of the most fun years as a fan of a team like is watching the young elite talent before the team's good because it's just filled with so much like hope and dreams <laughs> and and brilliant moves and yeah. like top tier talent yeah it's it's fun as much as it sucks yeah. to lose and be a fan of a losing organization the rebuild years can be fun if you embrace them. So just embrace it. Yep. I have, yeah, I have San Jose finishing with 68 points. I think they break the 30 win mark. They're going to get a few more wins. Even like, like you know, you get Couture in the lineup. You get 
Macklin up top, Will Smith. I mean, obviously, but everything we talked about. They're, they're going to add some wins this year. I still have them dead last in the Pacific. Don't get me wrong. 68 points is nothing crazy. But, uh, yeah, I think they're they're adding some wins for sure. Uh, yeah, I, this is a team I don't think they're going to crack 30. I got them 27, 44, and 11, 64 points, eighth in the division. I... I just see them being slightly worse than the Ducks and a, a year behind the Ducks, honestly. Yeah, a couple years behind the Ducks. Yeah, it, they they look like where the Ducks looked like two years ago. So yeah. that, that's kind of the parallel I drew. They're just like they're in the Pacific, though. So I think like they're going to win games against like the Ducks and the Flames and stuff, you know? I I don't think they will. Not as many as we think. And I think that like they're, they're just going to get absolutely walked around by the kings and yeah for sure by the knights like even like some of the more mid teams like the flames i think that that's going to be a really lopsided matchup this year for them they might sneak a win but i, I could easily see them going like one and three maybe uh yeah maybe <laughs> jay what you got i got I'm, I'm the lowest out of the three of you guys right? yeah both y'all i got them at 59 points. 59 points. 25 right. wins. And, you know, as you guys were talking, I just imagined a Flames-Sharks game. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. Like in San Jose, too. Yeah. Yikes. That's that's real hockey, baby. Some nice jerseys, though. Yeah, some nice jerseys. That's true. That would be a, a nice jersey matchup. Yeah. Speaking of nice jerseys, let's get to Seattle. <laughs> Eh. Jay hits him with the. Eh. Um, All I right. like I like the Seattle Unis. I'd pick up a Seattle jersey. I wouldn't. They're all right. I like them. Uh, yeah. So they add uh, Seattle, Seattle Kraken. They add Montour. They add Chandler Stevenson. Uh, regardless of the contracts, both are upgrades. Very much so. Very very much so. They were 29th in goals. The Seattle Kraken last year. Woof. Do either of those additions help that? I think so, honestly. One, I think that Montour is a fantastic uh, commander of the power play. Sure. And I think that integrating him into that PP1 as soon as possible is going to do nothing but good things for uh, their scoring players. Uh, Beniers didn't really take the step forward, but I mean, he was getting roughed up a lot. So you have Stevenson there to kind of like handle some of the workload you got Montour to, you know, distribute and allow him to get to the scoring area rather than, you know, distributing himself. I, I think that it's going to probably lend itself to a a better offensive production. I just don't think it's going to be the needle mover they think it is. Yeah. Like, I think they think they're way closer than they are when I, in reality they have like five steps still. And those contracts. Suck. are terrible they suck they're t they're they're terrible it's like you took two steps forward but the contracts put you four steps back yeah yeah i don't know uh if we pull up the the stat line or the predictions on them there i i i'm not huge on them i don't think they're gonna be better than they were last year but i also don't think they're gonna be like way worse either i have them at 80 points 35 wins uh yeah 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 there's I, just not a lot i love about the team really i i just have like a lot of i just see nothing but mid in their future you got burkovsky on the fall off schwartz is getting old gord and tate i don't have a taste for him tolvin is a great pickup but i mean if they have him playing on the third then what's the point I got him finishing with 86 points. That's uh, 39, 36, and 8. I think that they're going to be, you know, seeing much of the same issues they had last year with a little bit more of a proficient scoring from all of the players that should have been scoring. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I don't have, I, I'm trying not to say, like, like, dump on this team here, but like, they still have the same goalie issues. They still have the same defensive issues. They still have the same, like, depth issues yeah I, I agree and i mean we both have them fifth in the pacific there and outside of the playoff spot yeah and uh i feel like that's going to be recurring here with jay i um i don't hate the kraken actually nope. 
last year, like you said, they were they couldn't score goals. Like I don't I don't have the stats on deck here, but like they scored very well below their expected goals. Yeah. Whereas two years ago when they did make the playoffs, they were on the other side of that. Yeah. They were like out shooting their expectations. So I think they s- they meet in the middle somewhere. Yeah, that's fair. But like even with that maybe positive regression, it's not a great team. I still see some improvement though from uh I think it was 81 points to yeah. I got them at 87. Good for We all got them at 5th. 5th in the Pacific. Yeah. All right. Uh let's move on to the hometown team here. My boys the Vancouver Canucks. Uh, I mean, it's such a such a crazy off season for them, right? They 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 lose Elias Lindholm. They lose the boy Big Zadorov. Um, oh, Zaddy! He, hey yo, they add Jake DeBrusque, Dan Heinen, uh, uh, Sprong. They add Sammy Blay to a PTO. Uh, you have Lekker Mackey coming over from Sweden. I mean, there's going to be lots of new pieces in the room, but the big question marks are right now in net. Uh, we don't know what's going on with Demko. They seem to be saying things like he's going to just have to learn how to play with it. Surgery won't help, and it's like that's terrifying. That's not good news because that never works. Yeah, so that that's a huge question mark. I think that they're – they might be worse going into game one of this year than they were going into game seven against Edmonton. But I think that they're better than they were a year ago. If that makes sense. Like, cause like Lindholm Zadorov were like mid season deadline ads. So I, I think they're, they're better positioned right now than they were going into last season, which I like, but the the goaltending thing is really tough. Yeah, and like you know what, losing Lindholm isn't the worst thing in the world. I know a lot of people are upset about it, but like let's be real here. Like it's not like the thing you need right now. Like if we're ticking off boxes of things you need to be a contender, you have two great centers already. Who cares? Leave it alone. You don't need to be paying a third line center or even a second line center nine million dollars. Let Boston have that. That it's fine. No, I, 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 th- I agree with you for sure, but they're certainly worse with Pius Suter as a 3C than they were with Lindholm. I mean, yeah, but you got to take it where you can get it, of right? Course, you yeah. know, and like if you want to have the elite D-men and Quinn Hughes and you want to have the elite two in Heronic or near elite, I should say. He's not like, you know, the greatest, but he's pretty d- up there. Yeah. He's sought after. Like, you know, that you're shopping for, like, not top-shelf players, but almost top-shelf players. And with that comes making sacrifices along the way. Yeah. And, you know, I, I don't think you need a Lindholm. I don't think that that's the thing that's truly going to win you the, the chip. Right. Um, and a lot of these pieces I love. I yeah. love the DeBrusque ad. Yeah. I love the Sprong ad. Yeah. I I'm such a huge Sammy Blay fan. Yeah, I know, yeah. That dude is a grinder, and he is so about all of the little details. No, he doesn't score a lot. No, he doesn't have the best vision or passing. That's fine. Yeah. That's fine. You know why? Because at the end of the day, he's going to go out there, and he's going to do exactly what you need him to do, and he's still going to pot 10. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and uh, Kiefer Sherwood, too, they add. And I, I really like Kiefer Sherwood. I I didn't really watch a whole lot of Kiefer Sherwood until that national series against Vancouver. And that must have been what got the Canucks GM's attention as well because that dude was a problem. For, for a fourth-line guy, like, oh, my gosh, was he ever a thorn in your side to play against. And I like having those players. Yeah, and I don't think that Connor Garland is the big, like, you know, exclamation point like you know red button issue that they that he was made out to be no i think that 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 um narrative has largely resided though because he he was his line was so good last year that third line 
and he's he's a play changer like he yeah. can instantly change the game he is so good and like if he's i really doubt he's gonna be on the third but if he is on the third then that's like he's gonna still just be he will he will be for sure i think that that bluger joshua garland line was their best line for like half the season last year i think they'd, they'd be dumb to break that up even if garland could go higher he's also just one of those play drivers that like he is the play driver but that like it's not really conducive with being on a top line because he's not an Elias Pettersson, JT Miller talent. He's he, he's not like he can't be a complimentary player. He's he's the driver. Yeah, he's he's a second line player that looks like a first line player when he's playing against third line players. Exactly. Uh, I get you. Yeah, I a hundred percent get you. And uh, yeah, if you're scoring with Joshua and Bluger, there's no point in moving you. Yeah. Like why? He's would definitely the straw that stirs the drink on that third line. Yeah, and, you know, why move you to second-line minutes if you're going to end up losing 10 goals of production with it? Like, yeah. it doesn't make sense. And I, I'm not really sure what, what the deal is with it, but, like, Garland Pedersen has never really worked. They've tried it a few times, and it's just never really worked. And I'm not really sure why, um, because Elias Pedersen's not exactly a puck-dominant player either. He's He can very much be one of those guys that makes plays with quick passing rather than being super puck dominant, you know? Yeah, absolutely. But it just it just hasn't worked out for whatever reason that may be. But overall, I mean, the D group worries me. Um, very Edmonton-esque, where you have a fantastic top pairing and then just like four bottom pairing guys. I actually, well, I think that Carson Soucy's a second pairing guy if he's not the guy on the second pairing. I was going to say, putting him next to Myers to babysit is concerning. Uh, ex- exactly, right? So I, I do think, similar to Edmonton, they should really be looking for like a number three defenseman this year. I That should be the market they're shopping in. I mean, I really wouldn't be upset if like you just like moved Susie up to the first and Hironic down to the second, because Hironic has the mobility, the awareness, and the offensive upside to make up for everything Myers lacks. Yep. And... Susie is a great distributor and he very much understands to, you know, pass the puck down the cleanest lane and get the hell out of the way. So, yeah, I I think he'd be great for setting up Hughes, too. I won't be surprised if they move some stuff around. They like like Canucks management clearly thinks that Philip Peronic can man his own second pair. They've they've said it multiple times. However, I mean, Quinn Hughes just won the Norris and had by far the best season of his career with Hronik by his side. I think it's not the brightest idea to break that up. That's true. That's true. But you would hope that like with a new year comes like another step and continued yeah. success as an individual and not as a tandem, right? Yeah. So with all that said, I think that they are worse and possibly significantly worse than they were last year in the regular season. And I think that's going to come from a lot of just natural shooting regression like we were talking about with Seattle a little bit, they were shooting their lights out last year. PDO was as high as Boston's. Um, I think that's pretty likely to come back to earth. And then on top of that, you had some goaltending concerns that we're not sure about. I think that they've truly turned a corner from the team they were a few years ago, and I think their baseline is much higher. So I I have them at 44 wins, 32 losses, uh, 6 OTLs, and 94 points good for wild card too but uh i don't have them as like a a, a hundred point step up team yeah that's very fair i'm mm, pretty close along the same i got 44 28 and 10 it's good for 98 points in third uh i i just see this team they won't be sparkling they won't be great i'm sure they're gonna have their typical like mid-season struggle especially around the holidays they always do lord lord knows so yeah, I I mean the biggest issue is going to be your goaltending. I did this up before I got the news about the the knee issues, so you know, knock ten points off if you lose Demko. But I I think you'll make playoffs. You'll be fine. Probably not the year to contend. You got a couple moves to go. Yeah, but I like I like the overall moves that were made, and I think they make sense for long term. Yeah success i agree uh jay i got them at 91 points 91. which is to be determined if that's good enough for a wild card spot um 
That Demco news really concerns me. Yeah. Like I'm concerned yeah. for Demco. Like as a, has, like his career. Yeah. To be honest with you. Yeah, a hundred percent. And like you said, um, that shooting regression is probably coming. So that, right. on top of Demco, very most likely being worse. Yeah. It, it scares me. But I, I I did really like what they did in the off season. Yeah, me so too. It's it's kind of a, it's a tough dilemma. Team kind of reminds me of the Devils last year. It's not a one on one comparison, Pain. but like <laughs> the Devils <laughs> made that jump last year. Yeah. Well, and, and, and I mean the the Shilovs Schmied thing. It could be terrifying. And then like that's actually pretty true. Um, I didn't think about that part, but like it. I never thought the Devils were going to miss the playoffs at all last year. Yeah. And, you know, like, when goaltending isn't good. Yeah. And just a few things don't go your way, like. It can fall apart pretty quick. It didn't happen, yeah. Yeah. So, like I said, I don't know if this is a playoff team. Yeah. We'll see next week, but. I like it. Keep keep the cliffhanger going. Yeah. All right. I'm, I'm going to be, I'm going to be so real right now. If uh, Archer Shilovs is the next Akira Schmid, I'm going to throw myself into the ravine in this backyard. You know, I wouldn't be shocked at all. I know, I wouldn't either, and that's what scares me. The parallel is just too perfect. It's Playoff hero. Yeah. 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 All right, let's, uh, let's finish up here. we got one more team to go. Vegas Golden Knights. Vegas is just such an interesting team, right? Like, the very, very, very quiet offseason for them. They lose March so. Uh, they also lose Logan Thompson, but they bring in Akira Schmid, <laughs> who we were just talking about. They bring in Thomas Hurdle. Well, I mean, they get a full season now with Hurdle and Hannafin, which is big. They also bring in uh, uh, Holtz, who we talked about, and Olafson, right? So, not like a bunch of big moves, and it's a team that didn't really impress last year either, but... I do think they're going to have a really strong regular season this year. I, th- I think that Hurdle and Hannafin do a lot for their regular season results, personally. Yeah, I think this is going to be one of the last good years for Vegas for a very long time. And I think a lot of that has to do with the way that they've had continued success because the the wheeling and dealing of veteran players without any concern or care for what they do for the locker room and like the the intangibles they bring to the table like like everything you don't see everything that isn't even on paper the way that they interact with their teammates the way that they you know bring the leadership during the playoffs like there's so much that you just don't account for and i just don't see them having the same culture like boston where you can just lose these vets and have the culture keep itself alive because of the lessons they taught and what they'd pass down to the next generation because you just keep dealing away that next generation and you keep dealing away the vets before the lessons sink in so now this is just a team of really good players and i i'm concerned about the chemistry i'm concerned about like this this reminds me a lot of Tampa right before their fall off where it's like holy christ what a world beater team on paper but then you watch them play and they can't get on the same page like to the point it's almost embarrassing maybe yeah you know i i don't know i think i i understand what you're saying about <clears throat> about the wheeling and dealing it's been a big obviously talking point but that Vegas's D group is been pretty consistent. I mean, obviously Noah Noah Hannafin's a new ad, but Braden McNabb, Shea Theodore, Zach Whitecloud, Nicholas Haig, and and Petrangelo really like that's a largely unchanged group, and I think they show a lot of chemistry on the ice. Yeah, I think that. That being said, like I'm very concerned about their forward group, and a lot of Vegas's um, prowess in the regular season came from scoring. Yeah, and dominating in the scoring yeah. much like Edmonton um, I could see them shifting more to being a defensively sound team uh, 
sort of like the Hurricanes, if you will. Um, yeah, I think they're going to be very difficult to score on. Yeah, and and I don't mind that. It's just that that also concerns me a little bit if you have any injuries. Like Petro's got injury yep. history. He's getting older. A lot of those guys are getting older. I mean, Nick Hegg is a fantastic addition. Who wouldn't want him on your team? Not going to moan about that for a second. Yeah. I just... Yeah, I don't know. I just don't see it. Yeah, I, I get that. I, I, I don't buy into this team the same way I did. That being said, I still have them finishing very strong. Sure. I just don't think they're going to do damage the way that they have been for so forever, basically. Yeah, if we go to the, the, the predictions there, I, I really think this team is going to give every team in the Pacific problems. That's that's really what my my ranking for this comes down to, is. As much as like I, that forward group doesn't look like a Stanley Cup caliber forward group to me, which again. Uh, if Mitch Marner, or Trevor Zegras become available, don't be surprised if they're quickly Vegas Golden Knights. Yep. Yeah, and you know what? That would make me think that they're you know, going to be yeah. a Stanley Cup contender again. For but sure. I just think all of the teams in the Pacific are going to have a really hard time beating that Vegas team. And, uh, I, I mean, save for the Oilers. Yeah, I don't know. I have them as a 48-win a team. I don't have them breaking the 50-win the mark. I think they're going to be a bit more OTL merchanty than Edmonton is. But I have him finishing first with 107 points. One more point than the Oilers. Damn. Yeah. Yeah, I got him uh, with uh, 48, 30, and 4. I don't think they're going to be OT merchants this year. I think they're just going to be either very good or very bad, and there's no in between. Um, and I got him with 100 points. It's good for second in my standings. Uh, again, I think they're going to be very good and i think the thing that's going to propel them to the 48 win mark and you know play around with the 50 is just their coaching they have such a sound system and that's the way that they've been able to prof like be so proficient in wheeling and dealing and not looking like complete morons is because they've made every player look better than when they originally came in it's like you know you're like oh they can't make a bad move and it's like no i just think they have a really really good coaching system and they're yeah. really just able to get the best out of everybody yeah so i think that even though the culture may lack and it's going to be an issue in the future uh like the second they lose all their coaches that's lights out that's a problem yeah that's but gonna be a big problem for vegas yeah it's it's like the brendan moore situation again in yeah. in carolina yeah like great parallel without him it looks really bad really quick. But I got him good for second. Yeah. Jay? Jay? I got Vegas finishing first at 105. I actually just really trust them. Yeah. To put it simply, like, I trust that decor. And then I just trust, like, their system. Like, this yeah. bottom six doesn't look like the craziest. No, but like I just trust that like it's probably just gonna be fine. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm really high on Hurdle and Hannafin being here like for a full year now, not like a mid season addition. Yeah, I just uh, and I don't I'm not too moved by losing Logan Thompson. N no, I'm, not, am I'm I. not tripping too hard on that. Nor am I. So I got, yeah I got them finishing first I got them in the Oilers tied at 105 at 105 yeah all right so that's uh that's the wrap up here of our Pacific Division season predictions it's gonna be an exciting one hell yeah it's good to be back it's really good to be back yeah it's good to have everyone Central will be next week uh, very ex very exciting stuff uh, you got anything you want to close off with thanks for thanks for tuning in again let's have yeah. a, a super awesome season uh be sure to check out all of the other amazing shows across the thpn network yeah uh, if you're looking for more to listen to and uh yeah thanks for having us uh in your homes or in your work or in your ears wherever you may be because uh wouldn't be here without you dang right 
Uh, as always, I'm Tico. I'm yours truly. Keep your dang head up. Keep your head up. And rest in peace, Johnny Hockey. Stick talk. Stick talk. Stick talk.